How long after being certified will you be waiting for a foster call? I'm Nick, and in this video, we're gonna share some tips and some info that could shorten your waiting time. One, two, three. Let's go. When you first become certified to do foster care, the waiting begins. Again, I mean, you've already been waiting through the training process, through all the paperwork, through the home study interviews, and now you have that certificate. You've been certified to be a foster parent. And when are they going to call? It's no wonder we're already about to pull out our hair as we're entering the roles as an available foster family. So how long will you have to wait? And how can you reduce the amount of time it takes to wait to become an actual foster family with an actual foster placement. Now you've heard there's a real need for foster families. Tons of kids in the system, not enough families. Well, this is true. So why aren't you getting that call? When will the call come? Well, this isn't an exact science. There are some things you can do though to move yourself up to the top of the list of waiting families. Tip seven. And you've heard it before, but I wouldn't be doing my job in this video if I didn't include it here. Increase the range of children that you're willing to take. This may be increasing the age range, adding the other gender. This could be adding special needs to your list of people you're willing to take. Let me say here that many special needs are not necessarily more difficult to parent or not much more difficult to parent than other kids, but they can significantly increase your chances of getting a placement. Also, if you're not willing to accept a child who has ADD or ADHD, you should know right now, not many kids without ADHD actually enter the system. You might want to consider adding ADHD to your list. In fact, childhood trauma and depression both look like ADHD. The diagnoses are similar and they're often misdiagnosed. And so almost every kid who comes into the system either has the diagnosis of ADHD or will have a diagnosis of ADHD. So not taking that as a possibility in your family is going to significantly reduce the number of children that will be placed with you. Tip six. Uh, time, no, time of year matters. Fewer children come into care during the summer. They aren't going to school and so teachers don't see the warning signs. Several of our kids in foster care came in because teachers red flagged them as being truant or as not getting any work outside of school done and those red flags ended up into an investigation, and those children ended up coming into care. Several foster kids came into our care because they had been missing school. So obviously if there's no school, that's not gonna be a red flag for social workers. Also, Thanksgiving through New Year's, with Christmas and all the holidays thrown into that time, these are really stressful times for families. The amount of stress goes significantly up, but then again, the behaviors of the children, because they're so excited about Christmas or other holidays, they're picking up all this in the air from schools and other places, they're just so excited, they can't hold it in. Their behaviors tend to get much, much worse. Take it from a parent much, much worse. So holidays increase familial stress and familial stress being increased leads to some negative behaviors within the family, including possibly some abuse, some neglect. This can increase the likelihood that a child will come into care. And picture this, this can be a disaster for a struggling family. If family stress is high and kids' behaviors are extreme, bam, boom, not great. So this is a great time to be available. So let's say you're still in the certification process, you're still filling out paperwork, and you're dragging your feet a little, well, whatever the reason is that it's taking longer than maybe normal, pushing towards the fall is a good idea because fall through winter is a time when there's a lot of placements. I wouldn't say there's necessarily a reason to push for like May or June. At that point, take your time. Now you could still get placements. That's not to say that placements don't come year round. They certainly do. In fact, this last summer, for some reason in our county, there were like a ton of infant placements. I don't know why. It just sometimes happens. This is why I said there's no exact science to foster care. However, if you want to increase your odds, the fall is a great time to aim for. Because you may have more luck getting a quick placement. Tips. <laughs> Tip five. Everyone wants a baby. Seriously though, like everyone, well, okay, everyone except me wants a baby or a really young child. So if that's all you're willing to take, know that you have a lot of competition and you will probably be waiting a very long time for that placement, maybe 18 months, maybe two years. Plus, foster agencies are going to give preference to families who have already proven themselves at working well with biological families. So if there's a few of these in your area, good luck. Because I guarantee there's almost definitely a family or two families or 10 families in your area that have been really good at working with biological family members in taking care of infants. If you're a new family coming in, you don't have that track record, it's going to be hard to get a quick placement. Tip four. Get to know social workers, get to know placement workers. You want your name to pop into their brain anytime a conversation comes up about placing a child. Now, this could be placing a child who's been in another foster home. This could be placing a child who, who needs moved quickly for some reason or other. This could be placing a new child. You want them to go, oh, wait, I had a conversation with Nick and Nick said that his family's really good at helping kids 
with blah, 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 blah. You, you really want to pop in their heads. When any worker is in your house, at trainings, at agency or county events, get to know them and get to know them really well. Even workers who aren't necessarily responsible for placements, befriending one or two of these people might mean that your name comes up in a whole variety of placement type situations. This is critical. I, I hate calling her this, but we worked really well and really became good friends with kind of a bottom rung uh, worker. And she became our biggest fan in our county. Every gathering where they talked about placements, every time a possible placement idea came up, she would root for us and be like, wait, why aren't they going with Nick and his family? Just all the time. Like she was our biggest fan. You can't pay for that. <laughs> and all of that happened partly because we liked her and we had gotten to know her pretty well, but also partly because she had seen our work firsthand and she really appreciated that we were willing to go the extra mile for families. She loved our attitude. She loved the way we talked about kids. She just loved everything about us. So when it's the middle of the night and no one's answering their phones and they're like, oh, who are we going to call about this person? She's like, Nick, of course. But this time they're really struggling and they're like 10 families down in the list of like 80 families. And they're like, oh, I'm tired. I want to go to bed. Can we just get a name that we know we'll pick up? Nick, call Nick. You, you, you got to love that. Relationships are worth it. Also, let me add here that relationships just make the journey easier too. Like foster care is hard. And if you can befriend a couple people in the system or people that you're working with, it just makes it a little easier and a little more fun. You should do this anyway. <laughs> Three. This is a question that frequently comes up, but if you are with a county or an agency that frequently uses a placement worker, call that worker. Let them know that you're available and that you want placements. Also, ask them if they have a time or availability to talk about what you think your family is really good at or who they're really good at working with. This way, when a placement comes in, that's a good match for your family. They'll recognize it right away and they'll go, Nick, or whatever your name is. <laughs> you want that. You want to pop up in their brain as much as possible. Now, this is also extremely beneficial for children because... If it's a good match, they're more likely to stick with your family and not get bounced around, whether by your choice or social worker's choice. They're more likely to stay, which means less trauma for them and better health and healing for them. Check two. Okay, I know this one doesn't speed up your waiting time, but use this time to research and to prepare yourself. What are some hot buttons that you have? What are things from your past that children might push that might lead to less than positive responses from you? What are some books or videos you can watch about trauma that could help you be better prepared for helping children heal? Maybe you can watch some TBRI or trauma-based relational intervention videos here on YouTube. Or maybe you could listen to the Empowered to Connect podcast or another podcast about foster care. I'll include a few links to these videos down in the comment section. And we'll also link one of my videos up here that includes some tips on how trauma-based parenting is different from how some other parents could choose to parent. Tip one! And here's our number one tip. Possibly the most important thing you can do for placements throughout your time in foster care to increase how frequently they come in and reduce the amount of time you wait. Become a specialist in several different areas. Every family should specialize in trauma-based care and probably in ADHD as well. But what other role can your family fill that would help out your county or your agency as they look for placements. Can you take short-term drug-exposed infant placements where they scream constantly for like three weeks straight non-stop? Can you take teen boys or girls? I'll tell you right now, if you're willing to take older children, chances are you will not wait very long. <laughs> are you really good at helping students catch up in school? In our county, a judge specifically asks for this one woman who is so good at helping kids catch up. Maybe you could fill that role in your county. Can you drive children to four appointments a week? Does that not affect your work schedule? As you foster for longer and longer, you'll get to know yourself better and get to know what needs you can fill within your agency and your county. But you'll also get to know yourself better. I would recommend right now, taking a look at the child characteristics list. Looking over this list, what strengths do you have that could make you a better parent with certain types of kids? This is a great way to fill a need. It's on this list because at some point it's been a need. And many of these things are frequently things that come up with kids. So which of these can you fill? Keep in mind that some kids come into the system with not just one, but with a number of these needs. So the more things over time that you can become a specialist in, the better. So you may have noticed that as we've gone through this video, this video doesn't only help you get placements faster, but it also makes you a better placement for certain kids or makes you a better match for certain kids, which helps them heal, helps them thrive in your situation, either until they're adopted by you or until they're ready to be reunified by parents. Either way, my ulterior motive in making this video is to make you a better foster family. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe for more tips on how to be a better family and to see some of our family, both in interviews and in action here in the future.